The thermodynamics of mixing. How do we calculate final temperatures of mixed things? So imagine that we have a beaker with some water and we're going to add to it a very, very hot piece of aluminum. Represented here by a skeleton with hair. I'm not sure what that is. Anyhow, so what is the final temperature of a system formed by dropping a 750 piece gram piece of 650 degree piece of aluminum? Blah, blah. Ah, who cares? You can read. So we're going to basically take hot uh, aluminum and we're going to add it to cold water. And we're going to ask ourselves the question, what will the temperature be when uh, these have mixed? So some things that should be fairly obvious. Uh, we have a cold thing and we ha have a hot thing and we're going to mix them and after some amount of time has ha happened the temperatures will be equal so the cold thing is going to have to come up in temperature it's going to gain heat whereas the hot thing is going to have to cool down it's going to lose heat and they're going to keep doing this until their temperatures are the same so we can reason that the final temperature of the system is going to be some temperature between uh, the cold temperature and the hot temperature. They're going to have to meet in the middle somewhere. But how exactly? So, uh, if we reason that the cold thing is going to be getting heat and the uh, hot thing is going to be losing heat, we can set up an expression that says that the Q or heat lost by the hot thing has to be equal to the heat gained by the uh, cold thing but with a negative sign in front of it because one is losing one is gaining they should clearly have opposite signs because one is uh, becoming more and one is becoming less so equal and opposite so we can rearrange that equation to show it this way the heat gained plus the heat lost have to equal zero we just add q gained to both sides there and we get that expression so that there heat gained plus heat lost has to equal zero so if we apply this to our original problem what is the final temperature of a system formed by blop, dropping yada 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 so there's our equation so we start substituting what we know so for the heat gained, heat gained is from the cold thing. The cold thing is the water. So uh, what equation is going to govern this heat transfer? Well, uh, as long as this water is not at its boiling or freezing temperature, then we can assume that uh, it's going to be mc delta t, where m is the mass in kilograms, c is the specific heat, and delta t is the change in temperature, final minus initial. Um, and the same for the aluminum. Assuming that neither of these things are going to go through their melting or freezing or boiling points, we can set up this equation. Now it's just a matter of plugging in all of the information that we know in the correct units. So for the water, uh, well, it's all kind of gets plugged in at the same time. The mass of the water is uh, it's 1,500 milliliters. Uh, remember that one milliliter equals one gram for water. So uh, that's 1,500 grams, which I've changed into kilograms here, 1.5. Uh, C is the specific heat capacity of water, which you get off of a table. Liquid water is 4180. And uh, the delta T, we don't know. We don't know the change in temperature. So we have to substitute the expression T final minus T initial whereas the initial temperature was 25 here. So the final temperature, which is actually what we're trying to find in this problem, we're going to leave that as our variable, and the initial temperature is 25. Then for the aluminum, same basic idea here. We're going to take that 750 grams, change it to kilograms. You might not need to do the change depending on what, what your C values are labeled, and most C values are in joules per kilogram Kelvin. But you can see them listed in joules per gram Kelvin. That happens sometimes. Um, uh, and so uh, we find this 903 off of a table. And then again, delta T final minus initial for the aluminum is 
uh, TF minus 650. So a big long mess, none of those things were really hard to find, we're just kind of plugging all these things in. So now we've got to do a little algebra to reduce this down, so I'm going to start by combining the 1.5 and, and the 4180, multiply those together, and that gives us 6270 times TF minus 25, and then our 75 times uh, 903 boils down to 677.25 times this expression. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute those values, 6270TF minus, uh, and then 6270 times negative 25 gives us this number, and distribute the 677.25. Uh, these problems really aren't that hard conceptually. There's, they got to be, there's a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of being really careful with your signs, being careful distributing, adding, subtracting terms correctly. Uh, so that reduces to that. Now that we've got everything distributed, now we've got four terms. We've got two TF terms. We need to combine those. And we've got two constant terms, both of which are negative. We're going to combine those. Uh, move myself up the screen a little bit here to give myself some more room. And that ends up uh, 6947.25 TF equals that number, which you can pause at any time uh, if you are trying to work this math out with me. I'm going, I'm going a little fast. So we're going to go for the, that constant term divided by the 6947.25 gives us a TF of 85.9 degrees Celsius, which I probably needed to round to 86 with sig figs, but who's really paying attention at that point, at this point anyway. And so that is our final answer. That is the answer to the question. When this is done, if you take this hot piece of aluminum, put it in this cool water, they will uh, come together in temperature, mix until they reach a final temperature of 86 degrees Celsius, as long as it's a closed system with no heat escape to the surroundings. Now, uh, one thing I did say earlier was that we would expect our final answer to be somewhere in between the two temperatures. So 86 is between 25 and 650. And it's a lot closer to the 25, which also makes sense for a couple of reasons. Um, one, there's more water than aluminum, so uh, the thing there's more of, you'd expect that uh, that temperature to dominate. But also, uh, water has a much higher heat capacity, 4180, it's like four or five, between four and five times the heat capacity of aluminum. So uh, more water... Uh, higher heat capacity, so we expect the answer to be closer to waters, and it is. So that's how you do a uh, mixing problem. Um, but this one thing you got to be really careful of is that uh, these this problem only works this way if you don't cross any uh, change of state temperatures. Um, for example, if you found that your temperature ended up being like 120 degrees Celsius, that would be a problem because uh, Q equals MC delta T would not be legitimate above 100 degrees Celsius because you would need to include a boiling of water term there. There's a whole other lesson on the change of state if you haven't watched that one already. But you would need to include an extra term for the change of uh, the water into the gas phase. That would be a whole other problem. But uh, assuming you're not going through any multi or boiling points, you can just do it with these two terms and just be really careful with your signs and uh, really diligent with your algebra to make sure that you don't make any sign errors.